at Clef's Garage. Today is all about rear ends. How is your rear end? Have you ever looked at your rear end? I bet you wondered what's inside a rear end. <laughs> well, today we're going to show you. And get your mind out of the gutters. We're talking about rear axles of a car, specifically an antique car. Today we're going to talk about a Model T Ford. You're looking at a Hupmobile, but that's another story. Hey, so today we're working on a Model T rear axle. We're actually putting one together for Nash's uh, Speedster that we're building him, and uh, we're going to do probably a segment on this, but this is the rear axle segment. So just to kind of show you what's all involved in building up a rear axle for a Model T, uh, basically you start with the, the what's known as the third member. This is part of it. And, oh, by the way, this, this tool is available online at uh, most of the major uh, Model A, Model T vendors. This is a uh, rear axle vise for a, a term. And if you're going to build one from scratch, like what we're doing, this is what you need. So this sits down in here like this. So a Model T axle has a gear that is pressed onto the axle. It's actually got uh, keepers and a, and a half moon pin in there. So we're not really going to show you all the machine work and all that crap. We're just going to throw this together and just show you how it goes together. So you start off with putting an axle in there, in the third member. Now this is your spider gears. And that goes in here like that. And uh, uh, some of you uh, tractor guys or uh, four-wheel drive guys, this is what's known as welding the gears. They would weld these gears to that axle so none of this turned. And then that made, uh, that made the other axle that goes here that made it turn the same way. You notice this is turning backwards. So the whole thing would turn as one unit. But uh, I don't advise doing that because those welds will break loose because this is hard steel. It's not going to stick to it good. And then that just ruins your rear end. We're not doing that. So anyhow, um, yeah. So pretend there's an axle on this gear. The other axle goes up through there. And then this sits down on there. And you throw a bolt through there. Holds it all together. There's three of those bolts. And then you'll run a wire. You'll wire the nuts on so they don't funk, come loose. And uh, this is pretty much, well, the third member. And then your ring gear goes on here like that. So this is the ring gear. This would be the pinion gear that goes on the drive shaft. So this tool again, these here are for the teeth. So you set this on there like that. And then uh, this would go in here like this. Nope, sorry, wrong way. It goes in there this way. So now, you can put all the bolts in here, bolt this on, you'll run a wire through there. And that would be the next, uh, the next step of building the inner axles. So we've got that done. Now we'll move on to uh, showing you how this goes together. Basically, there's two halves of the axle. And this actually goes down over this, like that. And then you build the axle in two halves. So we're going to show you how you line this stuff up. All right, so at this point, we've started with the outer tube and we've already put the assembled axles and the third member in. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's actually two washers and a bronze washer that goes on the bottom and on the top. Originally, this would have been a, uh, a Babbitt washer and they was okay back in the day, but they did wear out. And what happens when they wear out, this whole unit will start moving one way or the other, usually away from the pinion. So when your pinion gear is in here, uh, it'll actually move away from it and this won't rotate anymore. So that's bad. So when you rebuild one of these, you always put the, uh, the bronze washers in there. This is where the drive shaft goes. We're going to show you that here in a minute. Uh, you're looking at this part here. This is actually one of these tubes 
cut off. Now don't get all excited. This was a bent tube, it wasn't usable. So I cut that off. This holds the, the uh, Hyatt bearing. There's four of these bearings in these axles. They go right inside there, one there, one down here, and there's one that goes up here in this part right here, and there's one that goes down there. They're all the same, and to check these to see if they're any good, they should measure 0 .500 or, what is that, half an inch. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what those should measure out at. If you've got one that's measured out at 0 .500, I think I'm saying that right, then they're good. And you want to check them and make sure they look good. Anyhow, those go in there. So this contraption I built is a, an alignment tool. I put this on, I have the bearing in there. I have this cut out, so the next part is to put the drive shaft in. And when I put the drive shaft in, sometimes you need to shim between here and the drive shaft to get these teeth in proper alignment. And uh, what we're gonna do is show you how this, how this works, but right now, I don't have the drive shaft in, so we're gonna do the drive shaft next, and uh, we're ready for that point. So this is the drive, actually this is the drive shaft, this is the drive shaft tube. Um, so this is, has an enclosed drive shaft. There's only a U-joint on this end. This is the U-joint. Not much of a U-joint, but it works. The other end is, is bolted directly into the, to the rear axle. So you have your, your uh, axle tube and the U-joint end. And then this is the, uh, the bearing end. And this is the drive shaft. The drive shaft has a bushing in here that you have to fit. And then this uh, U-joint will fit on here. And then it's pinned. Yeah, that's supposed to fit on there. Anyhow, so that fits on there like that. There's a pin that goes through there and holds it. And there's a bushing in here that you have to face because this is how you get rid of the, the slop between the drive shaft and the tube. So this is all done right here. But we're not really gonna go into detail to show you how we do that because it'd be too long and get bored. Anyhow, so this is the, uh, the drive shaft end. So there's a, uh, a roller bearing, can you see that? There's a roller bearing there of two washers. Another Hyatt bearing, this is a different size than the rest of them. It's only for this drive shaft. There's a sleeve that goes in there. There's a half moon key, and then the gear, and then a nut, and then a, uh, a pin to hold it on. So normally, um, at this point, you put this together, which we can do. Now it's inside there, and this is ready to, to put in, and you actually drive the pin through this hole here. Um, we put a bolt in this side to hold it so we can drive it down through there. You don't have to do that, but you do have to have something there eventually to hold it in place. I mean, actually to, to pin over your pin. So anyhow, at this point, I can get that done. This will all slide into that rear end. However, this one will not because this is a three to one gear ratio. Stock T was um, 3.68 to one, meaning the motor turned 3.68 times before the wheel goes around once. And uh, since this is a speedster, we've changed this. This is a stock gearing that you could buy back in the day uh, as an aftermarket. So this gear is too big. This gear is too big to, uh, to fit in there. I'll show you why. But there's a difference between a stock gear and a, this is stock and this is a three to one gear. So we'll have to take the rear end apart in order to get this on there. So we gotta face off a little bit more on this uh, bushing up here to get the, the U-joint to fit. So we're using this tool here. 
this is actually made to do this job. And once again, this tool is available through the antique vendors that uh, sell Model A, Model T parts. So we're gonna we're gonna try it here. to go. I didn't really need to take off a lot, but we're getting pretty close. This tool is really made to be used by hand. I'm kind of using uh, machine work here, so I'm trying to take it easy on there, but uh, don't want to take too much off the time. It looks like we're okay. Well, we're ready to put this together now for a final assembly, and uh, this does run in, in gear oil. But uh, we're putting this together dry. This is all spare parts that I had sitting around. This rear axle is, wasn't even out of the car. It's just spare parts that I had putting it together. So we're going to put this, uh, we're going to lube up the shaft. Remember, always lube up your shaft before inserting it into the drive shaft tube. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're going to put a little grease on here. And we're going to grease this high up bearing. So when it does start turning, it's not dry. And then uh, I usually run these about, I don't know, two to 500 miles and I drain, the, well actually on a T you have to use a, a suction tube to get the oil out of it. But I drain the oil out of it and then I usually go to synthetic or uh, just regular gear oil. But for right now, we're gonna, we're gonna put some, some grease on the, on the shaft and uh, lube it up. All right, so after like the last two and a half hours, we finally got the drive shaft together and got everything shimmed where it was supposed to be. You know, this was harder than fishing. I think we need to go fishing nice. This was like ridiculous. It was like work. Anyhow, we uh, got it back on here, and now we're going to show you what this is used for. So uh, we'll let him go handheld here and cut to the gearing. All right, so uh, now we've got this together with the drive shaft board onto our, our test piece. So you can see the gearing in there. If I, if I rotate the uh, gears, you can see that. So what this hole here is for is so I can check the gear lash um, to see if it's too tight or too loose. And the way I do this, this is an old Indian trick taught to me once by a person a long, long time ago in a place far, far away. Anyhow, you put this piece of paper in there, and then we're just going to roll it through there. Sounds easy. And just shove it out there aside. So as you can see, the paper's not ripped and it's got good contact. Now we've done this earlier without this gasket in between here, which shoves this farther in. And here's what happens. It shreds the paper. So that was too tight. That's how we knew this was too tight. It needs to come out this way either with a shim or with a gasket. So we used a gasket and we got it out far enough. So now it rotates fine like it should and it's ready to put together. So now we'll take off this test piece, axle tube, and we'll put the actual tube on here. We'll silicone this area in here and we'll bolt it together. All right, so like four hours later, <clears throat> anyhow, Got the drive shaft bolted on, got the second half housing bolted on. You see us put the sleeve in there, we'll put the bearing in, slid this down. Got it bolted up, got a sign on here that says no oil. We're ready to put on the radius rods. Uh, one thing you want to do is make sure this cap is up here, not down here, or you'll have to start all over again, and that's not fun because we might have already done that once. <coughs> Anyhow, <laughs> so these are the radius rods, what I like to call the triangulation rods. On a Model T, everything's got a three point. Um, basically a three-point suspension. Uh, so you have, uh, it's kind of like a big triangle. So this goes in there, and it will fasten up here to the axle, similar like that. Like that, we'll put a bolt in there. So anyhow, you get uh, both these bolt on. This goes up here. This one here will go down here. I don't know if I can get this one on here or not like this. Not really the way you do it, but we'll see. Like that. 
Lost my hammer already. Sometimes I like just to beat on things because it's fun to do. Anyhow, got this one. Well, it was winding up. It's not making me spit yet. Anyhow, you get it. completed uh, rear axle. We'll get this all tightened up and then we can get it off this stand, lay it down, we'll put the wheels on it and then we can start putting it on the axle. Anyhow, that's what a Model T axle looks like. That's going to conclude today's episode and uh, we're going to show you more of the front axle and then the, uh, the chassis and putting it together. We're going to build an Asia Speedster and this is pretty much all the start of it. So until next time, drive them if you got them. This is Bruce, Clutch Garage.